The Four Horsemen, Diecast Graveyard, Diecast Show Customs, 164 Revival, and Outlaw Speed Shop are having another invitational. This month, it's the 32 Ford Coupe that you see there, and it's to be done in a rat rod theme. I happen to have this little guy sitting around, so I thought, what the heck? <laughs> it's an opportunity to chop something up. So, took it apart, and uh, metal body, plastic interior, plastic base. Yeah, there you can see the windshield. Yeah, this is a new casting, even though it wasn't uh, in a package. Um, hadn't been too abused, so... I was checking the internet and I, I found a 3D file by a guy named Star Demos on Thingiverse. So I printed that chassis out there with the, the double engine. And uh, I'm new to resin printing and the pipes didn't come out right when I printed it. But I'm cheap and lazy. So I decided to go with that base even though it was flawed, uh, and make it work. So I had to cut the, uh, the body, as you can see, to get it to fit on there. And you see those little metal extensions where the pipes are? I super glued those on, figuring those would uh, work for the pipes. And I'm going to do some puttying work and stuff around them. I wanted them to look a little rough anyway. You know, they're not going to be chromed on this. This is going to be a rat rod. I'm going to have it have white pipes coming off of that thing. And uh, I, I actually, <laughs> resin, resin's kind of fragile. And uh, as I was messing around with this, I, I don't think it had happened yet at this point. But I actually cracked that chassis in half right towards the back end of it there, back where the rear wheels are. So a little while later, you're going to see an odd-looking JB Weld section back there. That's basically keeping that uh, where the, the post comes through in place. <laughs> because it, it, it just snapped in half. It surprised the hell out of me when it happened. Now, obviously, the engine from the original casting doesn't need to be there. So I got out the X-Acto saw and cut that thing off. The casting itself also had uh, quite a few casting lines on it. I was kind of surprised by how rough rough it was. You know, there's not much to that casting. But there you see, all I need is that little chunk of the interior to drop in there. And that works with the base. Maybe it's a little goofy looking. I kind of liked it. I, I'm going to rat rod it out anyway, so it's, it's not like I'm trying to make a daily driver here. <laughs> so yeah, out comes the JB Weld. When the, the thing snapped in half, I did use super glue to hold the pieces together. And then, as I said, you see those metal little tubes, the flared-in tubes, they're... they're caps that I put on there. Uh, those I super glued in place too at first. And then I wanted to mix up JB Weld to hold them in place a little better. And because it's such a fine area that you're working with, I use the X-Acto knife to apply the JB Weld. The, the problem with the 3D printout is the area under the pipes was flat. For anybody who does 3D printing like this, um, Probably the best way to describe it is I should have had supports there and I didn't. And so that area of the print did not turn out properly. But like I said, I'm cheap. I wasn't going to throw this away. This, this was perfectly salvageable. <laughs> I, I hope you agree with that when, when I get to the end here. I hope you, uh, I mean, I'll admit the pipes are a little rough, but I wanted them to be rough. Yeah, this, this, I cobbled this together the way I'd cobble my rat rod together. Yeah, the base, obviously, I, I hadn't snapped it yet at that point, I guess. I thought I had, but. 
Now, after the JB Weld, I ended up going with this Tamiya putty. Again, just trying to add some volume to the pipes. Yeah, coming off the headers there. I mean, if you can imagine half headers, half half of the round area. <laughs> kind of imagine that. That's what I had. This really is a, a nice 3D file, though. If, if you're looking to print it, again, it's by someone named Star Demos, S-T-A-R-D-E-M-O-S on Thingiverse. Now, that little tiny chrome piece, I just needed to get rid of the chrome because I'm sure as heck not going to have a chrome interior. So again, uh, you've seen me do this before where I throw a wire through something. And I threw a wire through that. Fortunately, there was an opening, dropped it into the super clean, just sealed that up in there for a little while. In virtually no time at all, it stripped all the chrome off of there. Just dissolves it right off. And then you just go and rinse it off really well. So now let the games begin filing this thing down. Again, like I said before, I was surprised at for a casting that had very little detail to it, it had an extraordinary number of casting lines on it that needed to be cleaned up. I would have thought that that was more common on a more complex body design. And maybe there's something about this I don't understand as far as the complexity. Maybe there's just certain curves that require the casting pieces, and it's not necessarily the uh, complexity of the details on the casting. I don't know. I suppose I could take lots of guesses, but <laughs> with no basis in reality, why say them? So anyhow, clean that casting up. Shine it up pretty well. Even though this isn't getting a fancy paint job by any stretch of the imagination. And then I wanted to get rid of that funky steering wheel. And so uh, Grizz over at Bearcat 3D Designs hooked me up with some little steering wheels. So I put one of those on there. I do have a link to uh, his website down in the description. As I do to uh, each of the Four Horsemen's YouTube channel. So be sure and you know check those out as well. And then it was just a matter of uh, adding a bunch of detail. I spray painted the interior with a uh, obviously a, a tannish brown color, as you can see there. And then I started using Army Painter paints and uh, some Citadel paints, and obviously a Vallejo paint. <laughs> I forgot about that one. Um, <laughs> for the silver on the steering wheel. Yeah, I guess I tried just about every paint imaginable on this. I really like the droppers of the Vallejo paints and the uh, Army Painter paints. I find those really uh, nice to use. Not that I don't like the Citadel paints. Once I had done the, the basic details on the interior, it was time for the Nuln Oil. And again, that just gives depth to that interior. I wanted to bring out the uh, folds in the seats. Kind of looked like an old tuck and roll interior. And there's what I used to paint the engine. That's kind of a wild combination of Citadel and Army Painter paints. Even that one at the right is Army Painter paint. One I just got for Christmas from the Zombicide package. <laughs> I went with the dark green old Ford engine color, white for the pipes. There you can kind of see what I did on the interior. And uh, the body itself I hit with uh, red Army Painter uh, primer, and then I went over it with gray paint, with a gray Rust-Oleum enamel and then I went over that with a matte clear enamel. 
I'd like to take a moment here to thank the Four Horsemen for hosting this invitational. This was fun. It was it was fun to uh, find this base to use, and uh, I happened to have the casting, like I mentioned before, so it worked out really well. This was kind of a kick in the pants to see what I could make out of it. And, you know, obviously, I did a wheel swap on it, too. It was surprising how well that base fit to the body. It fit really nice and snugly. I, I was quite surprised by it. I mean, it did take a little filing uh, originally, but the back there where the post is fit really well, even after cracking it in half. <laughs> so there's where we started. The little Hot Wheels 32 Ford Coupe. And uh, I hope you like where this one ended up. There's my end result. I think it's uh, sufficiently rat rotted out. I thought about going over the, the body itself with null oil and then decided against it. I, I don't know if that would have made it look better or worse, to be honest with you. But I'm pretty happy with the results. The detail on the engine, I think, came out pretty well. So hopefully you, like, hopefully you like this. Thank you for watching this video. Please check out all of the other people participating in this. The Four Horsemen themselves and uh, anybody else who's grabbing one of these little 32 Fords and rat-rotting it out. Thanks to my Patreon members for all of their support. I truly do appreciate it. And don't forget, coming up February 6th, we have the Three Blind Mice Gaslands group build. So uh, be sure and check that out. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Stay safe and healthy out there. Catch you in the next one.